clarify things. You're, you're saying Hil it would have been better for Hillary Clinton to be the president than Barack Obama because she, ev everybody would have understood her to be a more a corporatist. Uh, I can't course. see any programmatic differences in any relevant particular area of policy. Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, um, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, we're going to get to the audience section. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my thesis in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, you know, and. Um, <laughs> There's a possibility that some of the, uh, the tone with regard to negotiating with Iran would, would have been very, very, very different. Yeah, but that uh, people had an accurate understanding of Hillary Clinton as an establishment politician, and they had an unaccurate understanding of Barack Obama as a progressive outsider, which I thought was entirely false. But it's my question? Yeah, good question. Uh, you know what? I'll just follow up with Iraq. Um, uh, let me tell you why. Um, uh, if you've never spent, um, it, 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 it's much less, it's much worse than not being perfect on, I, on Iraq. Now, the O2 speech was interesting, and I actually saw it, I saw it live at the Daily Plaza that Obama gave, but it never pointed out that the planned invasion, which we knew was going to happen of Iraq, um, was, was going to be criminal and was going to be deeply immoral, and the predictable thousands plus number of Iraqi victims were completely unmentioned in that speech. Uh, the O2 speech came down, incidentally, from Obama's website. It was on it initially the minute he realized he was, uh, had a real shot at the uh, U.S. Senate. So it was gone. He was nowhere to be seen in the 2003 marches. And that's probably unfair, but you can't expect the guys running for the U.S. Senate, I suppose, to be marching next to me and facing down the Chicago police on the other drive. Um, but these O4 comments, one of them during the Democratic Convention, if I'd been in the Senate and had access to the same intelligent information as John Edwards and Hillary Clinton, I might very well have voted it the same way they did, which on many levels was an absolutely outrageous comment. Large measure, John, the reason he got to get, get this and put on his resume to show she was an anti-war candidate is that he wasn't in the U.S. Senate. He was in the Illinois Senate in 02, and he flat out admits in 04 during the Democratic Convention he might well have voted that way if he had access to the same intelligence that Hillary did, which is really kind of, was kind of about Kerry and Edwards, not yeah. um, Well, if I'd been in the Senate. Uh, and he said also to the Chicago Tribune, uh, the only issue really that I have on the Iraq war is personnel and who's carrying out. In other words, it'll be okay. We can, we can wind it down okay. As long as it's John Kerry that's in charge of the entire, instead of, instead of uh, the, uh, George W. Bush. 06, uh, mid, uh, the congressional primaries, Obama, Inc gets behind numerous, uh, and he's already a political machine by this time. He's a political machine almost from the day after the keynote address in 04. Um, gets behind the pro-war um, uh, versus anti-war candidates in numerous congressional primaries across this state. He could, he could have voted against funding the war, and he voted for funding it in 05 and 06. That's an absolutely critical point. And then these really kind of grotesque comments that come again and again as part of the prudential, prudential comment to the effect that, uh, you know, George W. Bush, at least the grotesque from my perspective, invaded Iraq with, quote, the best of intention, which is a phrase, <laughs> and the desire to export democracy, which is a phrase that appears in audacity of hope and repeatedly in speeches, in foreign policy speeches, that he's giving to prove his safety to an admittedly very nervous foreign policy establishment. Uh, you know, and it's that whole what Noam Chomsky uh, go, goes after a lot and what passed for dumb consciousness in 1960. Even the people who are against the Vietnam War, in, in like Anthony Lake, who's an Obama guy, you know, uh, uh, insisted on, on claiming that, 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 that we still have really good intentions. The problem with Vietnam, you never call it a crime. You never call it immoral. You, but you just call it a mistake motivated by an excess of democratic intentions. And in fact, Obama, I thought, cynically referred to anybody who talks about oil which Noam Chomsky said any one of three functioning gray cells in their head, no, we wouldn't have invaded Iraq if their main raw material was nutmeg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said that was cynical to even raise that. Obama said that. It was even cynical to raise that. My God, I remember when Barack on February 13th, 08, said the following to a bunch of UAW workers in Janesville, Wisconsin. He said, it's time to stop spending billions of dollars a week trying to put Iraq together and start putting um, you know, America together. Well, I like the notion of putting America together, but my God, is that, is it, was that his interpretation of what we murdered Iraq? We, we did things to Iraq worse than the Mongols did to Iraq in the 13th century. Already by that time, the realistic body counts in Iraq were probably well over uh, 750,000, if not pushing uh, 
uh, a million, and I'm, for, I remember the quote in a speech that Obama gave at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, in which he contradicted widely existing public opinion data showing that most of us were against the war and wanted us to be completely withdrawn from it if that's what most of Iraqis said they wanted, which British defense opinion polls showed most Iraqis wanted for like 04 on. He says, the American people have been very resolved you know, with the Iraq war, because after all, they have seen their sons and daughters die in the streets of Fallujah. And I thought to myself, what an insult, incredible, over-the-top comment, an example of proving your safety and your imperialism to the foreign policy establishment, that you would refer to Fallujah, that you would take this astonishing assault in April and again in November of 04 by the United States, the most by superpower, uh, just killing thousands of people, strafing ambulances on their way to hospital, and so forth. This is a Guernica in the in the Muslim world. It's one of the, one of the uh, one, one of the most remarkable. It, it, it's it's written into their history forever. It's one of the most astonishingly inhuman assault. And to get up there and say we're resolved behind the war, which of course was totally inaccurate, because after all, we've seen our sons and daughters die in the streets of Guernica. And earlier this year, after President Obama went to I love this camp victory and uh, praise the soldiers for giving the Iraqis uh, a chance for democracy and a chance to stand, you know, and now it's their job to step up to the plate because we created, after we had destroyed their infrastructure, driven out their middle class, their technocracy, and so on and so forth. By the way, that's not just, I really am done here, that's not <laughs> just a problem with Obama. Edwards really, all, I, I, and I went after Edwards repeatedly on seeing that, particularly on his foreign policy, right? Said the same crap, and Hillary said it too. This whole thing, it's up to them now to stand up. You know, for, so the Democrats want to get out of there so that they, they can take the freedom we give them. Well, no, actually, we owe them reparations, billions and billions of dollars worth of reparations. We destroyed it. That's why I ran into that standard. <laughs> um, first of all, no, Obama did not call the war criminal and immoral. He did not question the intentions behind it and all these things. Again, this is not Obama, who Obama is. He does not uh, insult his political opponents. He does not question their motives. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't operate in that way. And and I know that doesn't appease some of the truth tellers on the left who want to get at what it really is, but uh, that's how politicians operate. As for the website where his speech was taken down, you know, it may be true that they, they took it down because they were afraid that it would uh, hurt him somewhat. I don't know how they thought it would be a secret exactly, but uh, they, the, the excuse given was taken down because they, they were putting up new material. They took down old speeches. But I don't see... Speech available wait, 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 wait. The, speech is, the speech is widely available now. I mean, heavily promoted it. The question is whether there was a short time in 2003 when he wanted to step away from what was a very popular and many, to the eyes of many Americans successful war. Whether that's true or not, it, it's sort of hard to say. As for 2004, when he was talking there and def he was trying to desperately defend John Edwards and John Kerry, who, unlike Barack Obama, had voted to support the war. And he was trying to, uh, you know, Obviously, the Democratic National Convention in 2004 is not when uh, Barack Obama is going to haul out his this is a dumb war speech and, and reiterate it. But he was very clear in saying that he disagreed with them in his statement that uh, if he, he couldn't see the intelligence reports. Well, we, we know what was in the intelligence reports. The intelligence reports undermined the Bush administration excuse. They didn't support it. So it's quite clear that if Obama had been in the Senate and read those intelligence reports, and, and if that was the only basis affecting his decision, he would have made an even stronger statement against the war because those intelligence reports didn't uh, didn't support that. And you know, again, in terms of funding the war, I have to get back to the war was not going. It was a purely symbolic vote. And yes, I think Obama should have chosen the symbolism of opposing the war, which he eventually moved towards and got trashed by the right for it. But he did not caused the war to continue by, by doing that vote. The war was going to continue. The vote didn't matter. It was all symbolic politics. And again, Obama is not going to be your crusader on a symbolic level for those kind of things. That's not where he is and what, what he does in the rest of the uh, Let me ask a question of you. I, I was reading through your book. This is a, in the notes uh, near the end, which to me was a very interesting